are now entering the fourth. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first episode of the Fort Podcast. My name is Ed Galvez, and with me are my two awesome co-hosts. Uh, to my right is Kevin Ford. Hello, Eddie. Hey. And to my left is our uh, co-host slash producer, Mike Constantini. Hello. Heidi ho, everybody. And that sounded a lot like mine. Well, I just wanted to, you know, continue the... Uh the uh, the flow and I'm trying to create some animosity, you know, just to set a tone for the show. And the audience was totally judging. They're like, "Wait a minute, these guys can't have uh, unique intros." Like, screw this. I'm gonna right. go. Yeah, let me redo my. Let me redo mine. Then, okay, you ready? All right, okay. But but you already did it. Well, introduce me again. But but you already did it. They're gonna be like, oh, "Okay, fine." Uh, and to my left is our uh, co-host slash producer, Mike Costantini. Welcome to the Ford. Oh man, can I redo mine? <laughs> what? No, we can't redo it. Like he, that's uh, he got to change his voice. All right. Well, I, I change I, it because uh, you know I liked your intro, but uh, I change it because uh, you you want me to. All right, this is the last time. So whatever you do, you have to love it. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. All okay. right. And then to our my right is Kevin Ford. I will make your dreams come true. What the hell's that voice? Wait. I should have stuck with hello, Heidi. No, hey, Kevin, that, yeah, that was the same voice that I almost did though. Yeah, like, but I I said different words. Yeah, but it was almost the same kind of voice. But have, did you guys notice that it's weird that you guys say hello in a certain way and then you guys go back to your normal nerdy voices? Hmm. Yeah, you're like you're like, oh, hey, I, uh, hello, I'm 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 just generic Latino voice, and they're like, <laughs> yeah, no, wait, can I uh, redo my, my my voice? Like people know that that wasn't your real voice in the intro. You know, I've yeah, often heard yeah, that. That's right. I've often heard from people that Kevin and I actually sound very similar. I don't uh, oh, think yeah? we sound very similar at all. I don't know why you would say that. Well, I would say that just as easily as you would say that because yeah, we do sound very similar. Yeah, I'm, I'm not hearing it. I'm talking right now. Well, I'm, I'm hearing, hearing it, it and I'm talking right now. It sounds like two distinct voices. I think so, right but I, you know, I, I'm not other people. Hmm. Well, hey guys, <laughs> quit arguing uh, because, like, dude, this is our first podcast. I can't believe it. Yeah. yeah. The, and the three of us, we're like musketeers here. It's it's a whole new <laughs> journey. It's like a new era. It's a new beginning. 2010, new decade of shows. Exactly. And you know what? So that's why I, I just you know put in the work and got uh, the show started off right. Because not only are we on our own website, thefortcast.com, uh-huh. Sweet. Uh, we're also on iTunes uh, under Which the Fort you, Podcast. The Fort Podcast. Well, you can you can type in the Fort. Uh, or the Fort Podcast, you'll find us on iTunes, or you can just link to it from our website, thefortcast.com. Yeah. There's so many options. Options is what I'm all about, baby. Yeah, mm-hmm. because uh, you're going to want more from when you hear it from word of mouth. Am I right? Uh-huh. Am I right? A- anyway. Spread uh, that word. I actually got us our first guest for tonight. Uh-huh. It's none other than Josh Fadum. Josh Fadum. Awesome. Josh Fadum. I yeah. like that guy. You know, from 30 Rock and Weeds and Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That yeah. Guy. I actually got him to come on the show. On Fantastic! Uh, That's awesome. That's a hell of a heck he was of a on, get. Uh, I think he was on Reno 911 too. Oh yeah, yeah, he was the guy in the handcuffs. It's Very awesome. good, hilarious. Yeah. It's the best episode. Awesome! This is gonna be great. I can't wait. Also, our first guest. I feel like it's the Tonight Show for the first time. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like our Jerry Seinfeld. Exactly. I feel like somewhere there's like a monkey uh, smashing a bone in slow motion. I'm talking about like the first Johnny Carson, you know, Tonight Show. I'm talking That's about. I'm talking about the next step of evolution. Wait, there was somebody else before Johnny Carson. Yeah, Jack Parr. What was it? Jack Parr. He was before Johnny. Yeah, Carson. Yeah, yeah. But I always consider. I mean, because it was in my lifetime, like Johnny Carson was kind of my first uh, Tonight Show experience. Oh yeah, me yeah. too. Because we're not ancient. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, uh, old years. <laughs> oh my God! I also forgot the other thing. What? We actually have a sponsor. Sponsor. Are yeah. you serious? I got on the ball and I got us to summon to sponsor us without even hearing an episode. You are a pitch man. You're a pitch man in- incredible. Yeah, that that that's how I got the sponsor. I, well, I salesman it. extraordinaire, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That means we have money coming to the show, folks. That's a big deal because Ooh, the no. more money we have coming to the show, the more uh, special effects and... Uh, Merch. And yeah. merchandise and... Dancing uh, girls. Everything we can have, yeah. I hope it doesn't change us. I hope it does. <laughs> I don't know. It's really hard because, like, this is the very beginning. It may, the the greed. Yes, I agree. The greed may change us somehow. Oh, I'm just saying, I don't like me right now. I, <laughs> but I'll tell you, I'll be really happy when uh, we're on a on a on a yacht. Uh huh. And well, we just we just flew to an island on our own private jet. Well, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to uh, stashing it away in a savings account. 
I, I'm looking forward to talking shit about you guys to the tabloids. Um, <laughs> uh, but before that, we, hey, uh, we can't get paid unless we uh, plug our sponsor. So, oh, we're doing a commercial. So here you go, Kevin. Sweet. Just read. Just read the read the commercial. <clears throat> I'm Kevin Ford, and if you're like me, over the years your vagina has seen some severe wear and tear. I, um, guys. Yeah. I don't think I should be reading this. Oh, why well, it's, not? It's money, yeah. Kevin. I, yeah. Vagina? I think it's written for somebody else. Uh, There's no girls on the show. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> your your vagina has wear and tear. It's not our fault. It's natural. Between the daily scrubbings, childbirth, and regular promiscuity. Really, guys? Do do I have to? Could we trade it off? Maybe. No, that 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 causes. Uh, this is making me uncomfortable. Well, you know what? Uh, that's a, a serious problem for women. That causes uncomfortability. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, it'd be hard to get a girl to do this. I can see why they're they're getting us. It'd be rude. Yeah, it'd be rude. I want to tell a girl read this. Sure. Even but, if she had the problem. Okay, can I, let me get through this. Between the daily scrubbings, childbirth, and regular promiscuity. It's natural for a once proud mighty vagina to become a decrepit old embarrassment. But it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't. Come down to Don Perro's Vaginal Reconstruction Clinic. He will make your vagina's dreams come true. Uh, that was really great reading, Kevin. Great yeah. job. Thanks. It's, it was uncomfortable, but you know, <laughs> I, I, I got through it. That was uncomfortable? You, you guys have to hear like what I went through to get that sponsorship. I'm pretty curious to hear why. Yeah, Yeah. you know what? I knew or curious to hear, hear how. <laughs> you know what? I was really nervous uh, and, and curious as to what was going to happen. So I actually taped the, the pitch session uh, for the sponsorship. You you taped it? Yeah. Did he know he was being taped? No. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that kind of against the law? Uh, well, <laughs> only if you believe in the law. <laughs> It's He's probably not going to hear this. It's fine. Well, actually, I really want to hear it because, I mean, Ed sounds like an amazing salesman. I just want to see how he got some guy to, you know, invest in our podcast, even though our podcast is really not about, you know, it's not really a, a yeah, woman yeah. happy podcast. Yeah. Necessarily. So, so here, let me just pull up my iPhone and Mr. Perro, how are you doing today? Hola. I am well. Thank you. I noticed that business is uh, is it's it's kind of quiet today. I need to see your vagina. What? No, no, no. I I, I will fix your vagina. I am good doctor. No, well, I'm. I'm I, very good doctor. I I hope by my beard that you can see that I'm a man. Um, uh, but I wanted to help out with your business problem because I am starting a podcast that's going to be downloaded by millions. Of millions Aye, of a vagina podcast. Wonderful. Yes. Well, sit down here. I look at your vagina. Well, no, no, I, uh, look, I'm a man. I'm, look, look, look. I'm please get, get away from my zipper. But if you uh, sponsor our podcast, we will definitely plug your vaginal rejuvenation. Oh, clinic. good day! I need customer for my vagina. For your, for your, <laughs> I'm I'm sure for your, uh, for your clinic. For my vagina clinic, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, we have a uh, different uh pricing. I plan. write check right now. Great! I Thank write check. Here, here's my checkbook. I am pulling out pen. I will write it to uh, to uh, you. The, the fort. The fort podcast. Fort vagina podcast. Uh, no, no, there's no, there's no vagina. Oh, yeah, of course, I forgot. Uh, you said no. Okay, uh, new check, new check. Uh, the okay. fort cast. I. Uh, uh, how how is this? Is is this enough money? Uh, uh yes. Satisfactory. That, that, that's that's very good. Thank and you, you will so tell everybody you know. Come to Don Perros. Vaginal reconstruction clinic. <laughs> you know it. I fixed it the best vagina. <laughs> Where'd you get that scar? A oh, horrible accident in Ecuador. Gee. Have you ever heard of vagina dentata? No. The vagina with teeth. Gee. Yes. No. Beware. They exist. It is not myth. It is non-fiction. True. I had my face next to vagina. Innocent inspection. I am doctor. It is my job. Vagina, bite me. It lash out and try to crush me. Do you, do you still dream about it? I don't dream. I have nightmare. Okay. Here, uh, take this lollipop. You are a good patient. Thank you. It's root beer. You didn't uh, cry once. Uh, <laughs> you are a very brave patient. <laughs> well, it wasn't my face. Uh... All right, thank you for the check. See you later. 
Don't forget to send vagina. <laughs> as soon as we launch. Wow, Ed, I, I mean, I, you know, Kevin is so scared right now. He's actually laughing. <laughs> that guy sounds like a like a trip. I, t- I tell you what, maybe I'm drunk or scared, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm a little scared. I mean, I, I feel like we have a, a dictator that is is uh you know. Well, you know, yeah, how do we know funding gonna... funding our podcast? You well, gotta... you know, he dictates what a beautiful vagina looks like. So, was he sweating when he was talking to you? Yeah, yeah, maybe I've seen too many movies, but he sounds like a war criminal. Ed, were you sweating when hiding. you were talking to him? Uh, I'm chubby. I sweat. I I sweat. I sweat no matter what. Well, I'm just saying. I mean, you you held your collective cool. I mean, this was a crazy. What was movie. the whole yeah. part about the zipper? Did he try to touch your crotch? Yeah, he thought it was a girl, but he he only had one eye. I mean, I, I, as long as the check clears, whatever, right? Yeah. I mean, so basically, and I'm just gonna let you deal with the. Uh... <laughs> no, that, that's not fair. No, I'll go uh, down. Right, I'll go right, down yeah. next time. Yeah, Kevin goes next time. I'll go next time. Right. I'll, I'll oh, talk. Shit. To him, I, I mean, I'm gonna have to go too because you guys are my friends. You, you'll 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 go next time. <laughs> I mean, the third time. Let's get to our guest, Mr. Josh Fadum, coming up next. Josh Fadum. Ah, yeah. Josh Fadum. First special guest. First special guest. Uh, I got. I called dibs on this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Can we say first cuss word? Yeah, <laughs> first cuss word. Oh man, tons of firsts. I'm really excited to have uh, Josh Fadum here. I've seen the Midnight Show at the ECB many times. Uh huh. I'm in that. Awesome show. Uh, yeah. I know you guys have been in some dealings. Uh, you were just up at the San Francisco Sketch Fest, right? Yeah. Fantastic. How was it? It was super fun. Yeah. We performed at the Purple Onion. Wow. How did that go? Uh, the first night was like, eh. The second night was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, did you pull together your best stuff or did you pull together like, you know, uh, I mean, did, was it just a standard show for you guys or did you pull the best of the best together? We kind of put some of uh, the group's favorite stuff in there, you know. Mm-hmm. I actually saw your show uh, at the Comedy Central stage. Actually, mine or the Midnight shows? The Midnight shows. Oh right. Oh, yeah, I didn't know you had another. Uh, that 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 means. Well, I did one of my own. <laughs> wow. Yeah. As I am an entity outside of the Midnight show. Well, the one of the uh, <laughs> yeah, the Comedy know, Central yeah. stage, the Midnight show that we saw was fantastic. I, I participate in the Midnight show branding, but also uphold my own personal brand. <laughs> That's good. That's important. Absolutely. Yeah. In this town, it's really important. Yeah. What's yeah. the other show? Yep. I was just. Josh Fadum's show at the Comedy Central stage. Uh, what? Not as flashy sounding as the Midnight Show. But <laughs> I just did stand up for a while and some sketches. It was months, months ago. It was like a, last year. Anyway, we were talking about the Midnight Show, though. How about that? I think the Midnight Show is fantastic. Yes. Yeah, you're all like over it. Funny or Die. You got yeah, sketches on the web. And yeah, the they like and this. have taken getting really well. Hearing you guys talk about it, it's like, whoa, the Midnight Show really has a voice out there. <laughs> we got our fingers in a there's lot a of pies. Sub, there's a substantial audience. Yeah. That, it's well, I know. Like, I mean, with these days, it's, it's, it's tough to get sketches on TV. And, yeah. Uh, you guys seem very close. Like, I... I, I Good friend of mine, Jeff Sloniker. Uh, oh, a good friend of mine. Yes, absolutely. And good, uh, good friend of mine. And uh, yeah, Ed. Ed is he a good friend of yours? Uh, 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 he gave me a ride once. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, you know, you, I've been talking with him, and uh, I know uh, Joe Harkenrider too at, at the Comedy Central stage, and he's kind of a big fan of you guys. Oh yeah, I, I actually met him uh, for the first time. I'd heard his name before, but uh, I met him for the first time in San Francisco because uh, I don't drink that often. Uh huh. But <laughs> uh, on the last night, because I did a lot of shows in San Francisco, I also did stand up uh, hosting for Brent Weinbach and Moshe Kasher. And then, so a total, I did like seven shows in San Francisco over the course of three days. Wow. And uh, by the end of it, I was like kind of really tired and I was a little stressed at the beginning. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll get wasted. And, <laughs> um, and then I got wasted and, uh, you know, cut to me and. Apparently, Joe Harkin Ryder's hotel bathroom going, Whoa, why does it feel so bad? <laughs> why do I feel so bad? With Sam, my friend Sam Brown taking care of me. And From being like, uh, what is kids, a, you know? Yeah, being like, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You should have been giving me some water or something. That just they were doing. They, they, they were doing. Oh. Yeah, they were. They were pouring plenty of water down my throat. <laughs> now my mommy knows that I drink sometimes, <laughs> but drink so much to the point where I have to make myself throw up. Well, we're, uh, well, we're blocker from the website, so. So She'll should. find a way. <laughs> <laughs> She's a hacker. Yeah, uh, She's a hacker when it has to do with my name. 
<laughs> oh, found this. So, um, so you actually opened up for the Whitest Kids. Uh, yeah. Did you go on tour? Uh, I bet that was a blast. It was. Um, were there any hijinks or anything that happened? Uh, well, during that, if experience? you count high drinks as high drinks, <laughs> I would. I, um, I, I, high drinks lead to high jinks. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, what is it? I mean, oh gosh, there's lots of movie, movie watching. I remember when we were, when we were on tour, the, the big, uh, the big one of the things like, cause we were in the buses and we stop at truck stops in the middle of the night. And so frequently we would just try to find the crappiest movies we could find. <laughs> and, you know, we had a couple of Van Damme marathons and, um, uh, oh, I don't know. We just watched really crappy movie. Like I bought like some Cynthia Rothrock movie. Nice. Uh, <laughs> you just struck a big nerve with Kevin and I because we love Van Damme movies. We're, and we're, Ed, so do I. I love yeah. them too. Yeah. yeah. We, we all just watched Cyborg about a month ago. I think. Yep. Oh, over my place. Yeah. The yep. three of us. And discovered it was way worse than we could have ever imagined. Oh, it was jaw dropping. Kind of boring. I thought. I it it so. gets. You know, it's a really long movie. It's back when I think they made movies and like they didn't care about length so much. Mm. They didn't. They didn't care how, how long Van Damme was going to be on. Right. In people's faces. You know what I want to see which I've never seen Cyborg 3 starring Jack Palance and Angelina what? Jolie no, oh. I th- are there, are there, have you guys seen that Wait, I, think no. that, I think that's two I think Cyborg 2 that is it I was I was thinking it was three but you could be right I believe it's, it's two. Angelina Jolie though it's right? got a great box yeah Angelina cover. Jolie yeah, yeah it's like yeah. Bef- way before a yeah. young Angelina girl interrupted pre-tomb girl pre uh, Brant Brangelina uh, Jack Palance was way past his Right, you know, there, there was like an intersect well, between the, I, two careers. I feel like I'm of age to where it's Jack Plants in his prime, but <laughs> then, I got, then I got a little older and I realized, oh, he's been around long before. Confidence, <laughs> <laughs> he's very sexy. <laughs> yeah, the Ripley's believe it or not, money was drying out by then. Josh, what's your favorite Van Damme movie? Uh, I know it's hard. Uh, well, I'm gonna have to rat. I have to see them all in front of me first. I. I really like. I really find the movie Nowhere to Run to be underrated. I wouldn't call it my favorite, mm-hmm. but I, I actually I saw that in the theater. Yeah, I, to run. I saw it a lot uh, growing up on HBO with my friends. And uh, Roseanne Arquette takes off her clothes. Yeah, and there's a scene where she like I believe she takes off her clothes, and you see upstairs and downstairs, <laughs> and Karen Culkin, who plays her son, is watching her, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, she does it with Van Damme. And uh, and oh, I like I like Time Cop. Even Time Cop is great. It's really yeah. crappy. Yeah, that's probably his yeah. most expensive one, I would think. Like with all the special effects. Ron Silver stuff. plays yeah. the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Death Warrant. It's okay. Death, yeah. That's another Lion, ridiculous Lionheart movie. was the, my well, favorite. Me one. too. Lionheart, uh, it's yeah. like it's like oh hey okay, I'm I'm spending forever in the Foreign Legion. What my brother? Hey, your rules don't apply to me, Foreign Legion. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, but when that commercial for the movie came out, though, they had nothing about the underground street fighting. Like all you saw was his brother getting set on fire by gangsters, and then Van Damme mad and hitting somebody. Yeah. So you thought it was like a revenge pick, and then you watch the movie and it's like, oh, that all that happens in the beginning. Like it has nothing to do with his brother. He just comes to America and starts fighting underground. H- hard Target's pretty awesome. We watched oh, Hard Target. Never mind. That's my favorite. Hard Target. Yeah, Hard Target's yeah. pretty awesome. I have to say Bloodsport. Really? Yeah, one of mine. I, I really do. I just I, I like his passion in that movie. <laughs> uh, I mean, and and if we're talking like uh, not of, as a Van Damme movie, if we're just talking like Van Damme, I thought JCVD was really awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. I just watched that for the first time. That was fantastic. Also terrible, but I had fun watching it. Double Impact. Oh, Double Impact. Now you're oh you're hitting a nerve there. I just yeah I just watched that a couple weeks ago. Yep. Yeah. Very good movie. Saw that in the theater too. Yeah. What was the one that he did with uh, Rodman? That's double team. Double team, yeah. He's got double impact and double team. That's and, uh, one I never saw, actually. Uh, Mickey Rourke's yeah. the bad guy in that. And yeah. I believe now the same director of double team. Now, Sue Hark, who's like a big Chinese director, <laughs> uh, I think he also directed Simon Says with Dennis Rodman. And I think Dane Cook plays the sidekick. The <laughs> sidekick. Ooh, it was before his like bigger success. <laughs> yeah, wow. that's right. But he was like, he's like the... He's sort of, sort of like the nebbishy psychic, like, well, what are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind seeing that. I, I will. I think I put it on a video store I, I work at once, and uh, I was uh-huh. like, oh, wow. Yeah, so you work at Cinephile, um, and it's a, it's a very uh, specific uh, video store, or as far as it focuses more on like independent and hard-to-find stuff. Um, it had any like interesting experiences with some of the characters that come in there? Oh uh, yeah, uh, there's all kinds of characters uh, that come in there. Um, 
Uh, some of them I've actually told recently and um, have re- ongoing inside jokes with. Uh, there was one guy who – well, here's one that's easy to tell that I can remember with – as few ums and uhs as possible um, <laughs> because that's what all my stories are scattered with. But there's this woman who came in one time and she's like, she's a large black woman. I'd never seen her in there before. You usually <laughs> kind of can spot the regulars. And she had a, she had um, a large black woman. I think she had like oh, baggy pants and uh, a ski cap. She had gap teeth and sunglasses and like a ski cap on. And so she was hot. <laughs> and uh, oh, babe, babes galore. And on the ski cap, was a middle finger <laughs> like patch, like sewn on. You know, some people have like a marijuana leaf. She had a middle finger. <laughs> was, she she sewed it on on top of the marijuana leaf. Like she's like, no, I want a middle finger. Yeah. Like, or she's like, hmm, I could pick the middle finger one or the marijuana one. <laughs> I'll go with the middle finger. <laughs> but that's how she talked, and she was like, she asked me for a movie, and I was like, I looked it up, and it's and I was like, it's in the queer section, and she was like. <laughs> So she was like, queer section. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then about, uh, oh, she also kept asking, you got that movie with Dick Powell and Lana Turner? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, do you know the title? And she's like, come on, man. You got to have that movie. <laughs> Dick Powell and Lana Turner. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, oh, I don't know what it's called. I don't know what movie the two of them are in together. Later on, I looked up what movie it was like on imdb you can look up uh what it has or you know combination and and uh, the only movie that they were in together is the bad and the beautiful which stars kirk douglas so <laughs> it's funny that she would not say you know the kirk douglas movie <laughs> if, if she was thinking of the bad and the beautiful because there's no other movie that has dick powell and lana turner together right. but anyway she was like uh i told her about uh Oh, she kept, she just kept saying that. Come on, man! You gotta have the oldest cinephile. You know you got this movie. <laughs> and she was like, she goes, uh, she, she like disappears after I told her uh, a different movie that she asked for, and I told her it was in the queer section. And about ten minutes go by, and I hear her shout out, uh, "Oh, I ain't looking at no more queer movies." <laughs> <laughs> Except she, she shouted it from the comedy section, which is on the other side of the store. Uh, I was going to say, uh, there's been no movies with Dick Powell and Lana Turner together except one, right? Right. So are they considered like the Al Pacino and, uh, you know, in Heat, oh, yeah, when was... Robert De Niro and Al Pacino sat down for the first time? I think back then, like, that was like as big, yeah, like well, as yeah. big a deal yeah. than yeah. sharing this. So is that like the equivalent yeah. today? When, yeah. Yeah. Like everybody was see... like, when are those two going to do a movie together? It'd be so awesome. Yeah. And, then they, and then they made uh, the prequel to Righteous Kill and everyone was really disappointed. Righteous Kill makes no sense unless you've seen the prequel. That's why yeah, I Unless you've seen the movie, with the original with Dick Powell and Lana Turner. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually a remake of a movie with Dick Fowler and Lana Turner. <laughs> what I thought was funny was uh, like she was like kind of homophobic. She was like, "Like what? That's that's a queer movie." Well, yeah, it was. <laughs> it's weird because she's like, she gave it a shot, but she didn't actually give it a shot in the right section. I yeah. pointed to the uh, right of the store, and she went to the left of the store. Mm. <laughs> And then shouted, I ain't looking to no more queer movies. <laughs> <laughs> but she asked for a movie that was in the queer section. So I, I've i recently been renting movies uh, from this little mom and pop video store that's like right down the street. But I recently discovered it. I think it's mostly like a gay video store. It's like, it's not, uh, it's, just, it's just called... Uh, uh, good movies, and it's down on Ventura Boulevard what, here. What, what kind of posters do they, do they have up on the wall? Well, the... that's the thing. I mean, they have a. <laughs> it's a lot of like you know, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's say like be kind behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just. It's just. Be I guess behind. they have a big porn section. Actually, I mean, it's kind of weird. It's one of those those uh, mom and pop. That's what's great about the mom and pop place. Yeah, I mean, the they only ones they, they do have yeah. you know really big porn sections, but I just I was. Looking in the porn section, not because I was like looking for a porn or anything, but you know, I was just trying to gather like you know what was in there, and uh, I did notice there was a lot of of gay porn actually, uh-huh. and at the gay video store, at the gay video <laughs> store. But this is I the gay woman pop video store. Yeah, but I I didn't realize it until like after I had been going there a couple times, you know, and <laughs> and seeing like and. Suck, yeah. Sucking off a few cocks. And well, like, yeah, you know, I mean, it, yeah, no, let's, you know, don't, was, don't you. In, not that I care. In, I was in just, the glory <laughs> section. To be very honest, <laughs> yeah. it, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's weird when you, 
like you go in there, but you notice like there's a certain clientele that come in there over time, and uh, gay people, a lot of gay people, yeah. And uh, there was, uh, I mean, you know, the the movies that they have, like you know, that are on the on the thing. A lot of it uh, are shows from the uh, the L uh, channel, or is it the uh, L Word Cube? The L is it Cube or L Word? Wait, Q? L Word is a television show. I believe Q is a television. Or Q, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Q oh, network. Okay. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Unless, I don't know. One of them bankrupted. I don't know. There were two gay stations. One of them went bankrupt. I think oh, okay. But my I point actually, is, oh, they actually have the best movies there. I think because, like, I, <laughs> I went. No, I'm serious. Like, uh, I don't like blockbusters, so I was looking. I used to go to 2020, and it went out of business. Mm-hmm. And I was really oh, bummed because I like mom and pop like more. I mean, they're a chain, but they were a little more mom and pop because they were, you know, owned by. If they got a porn section, they're mom and pop. Yeah. So, like, I mean, this new place is really cool. And they actually have a really good selection of movies. Better than uh, Blockbuster, better than anything. But mm-hmm. uh, Blockbuster doesn't have a good selection at all. Well, no. Yeah. And they edit their movies, too, uh, what? apparently, from what I hear. Yeah, yeah. Like what? Example. Um, like Bad Lieutenant. Uh, like the yeah, like they Kytel took out. Movie. Like, it's NC-17 if you go anywhere else. But yeah. if you go there, it's only rated R. Wait, and they that- cut out Kytel's penis? Is that it? Uh, they probably cut out it. a lot more than just the penis. <laughs> <laughs> that was Remember. the first thing that popped in my head. Penis. So put, I'm sure they cut out, you know, or or ch- turn, you know, I bet you suck a good lollipop. <laughs> 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 yeah, it, like it's that. just <laughs> funny. The reason I mentioned that, it, like, I, I love going to this video store because, I mean, they, the, the movies are cheap. You can rent them for a week and all that. Guy, everybody's really nice and everything. But my, I'm, I don't notice things very well. And I was with a, a good friend of mine, and we were running a movie, and... We had been going there, like you know, after a while, and after a while, I'm like, you know, I think, I think they, they have a very large, you know, gay uh, membership at this video store. And my friend just kind of looked at me. He's like, "What gave you that idea?" And then chirp, he kissed chirp. you. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like we? And then just, he leaned like in for a kiss. This. I just mean I, I don't notice things very much. You know, it's just funny. Hey, what, don't what? ask, don't play and yeah. tell. One other thing <laughs> I just thought of about uh, about cinephile or something. Well, two things that happened today. One was that someone called, and it was a really staticky phone call. I couldn't quite understand them, and they were asking for the film King Corn. And I said, <laughs> I really go, what? Gay porn? <laughs> <laughs> I really thought that's what she was saying, too. And, uh, you know, you just can't write this stuff unless you're a bad writer. <laughs> is gay, it a gay porn in the movie? Is it a mom and pop place, though? I can't remember if you said so, Ed, or not. It, mom it's, and pop. Now, it, it's an independent Video store. That's cool. I have to check it out. Is that would that make it mom and pop? It's run by a single man. Yeah, that's. I would call does that a mom parents? and pop. Yeah, yeah mom and pop. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He has a mom and a pop. Okay. Saying something's mom and pop doesn't mean there's a mom and pop. Yeah, yeah. Come on yeah. down to the mom and pop. Well, store. I used to work at a mom and pop uh, music store. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And actually, it was a mother and a father that owned it. So never mind. I used to work at a mom and pop <laughs> video store, and it was just old green guy. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I remember you telling me about that. He was very crabby. Yeah, crabby old Korean guy. Now right? I got a stereotype in my head for a Korean. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> crabby Korean. Yeah. Well, you know what? The thing is, like working for mom pop places, I'm less likely to steal <laughs> than like <laughs> right. when, when I when I worked for like Olive Garden. Like I couldn't steal enough. Like like mm-hmm. I was so like angry and like like when I, when I left there, like I got a friend of mine a job as a bartender. So um, so my last week there, uh, he was behind the bar. So like I would come in like with a backpack. And I was moving to L.A. like at the end of the week. Right. So I would be like, hey, can you hold my backpack for me? And then like at the end of the shift, I'd be like, oh, can you hand me my backpack back? And he'd give it to me. like, ka-chunk. And it'd be like like four bottles of liquor. Like, And then like. <laughs> he took, with, he put him in there? Yeah. That, oh, was, yeah. that, was, that, that was our scheme. <laughs> uh, and then there was also like this other manager who was like. I get it. Can you hold my backpack for me? Yeah. 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 Hang we, on to it for me? We, we wouldn't put so many so much inflections just so people wouldn't get <laughs> right. suspicious. <laughs> Right. But like Can was, you <laughs> keep it behind the counter? <laughs> quotation mark fingers, quotation mark fingers. <laughs> You're just winking back and forth for like a minute. <laughs> wink, 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 wink. <laughs> and actually saying wink when we wink. <laughs> <laughs> and then mouthing, I mean, fill it. <laughs> <laughs> then the managers would be like, oh, nothing suspicious going on here. And yeah. then they go about their day. Everything normal? Oh, yeah. I only yeah. yeah. understand the literal sentences that people, that people say. <laughs> yeah. And then it was also like when I would close, there would be like this one manager who would like, uh, he would like lock it, he would lock the doors after we closed, and then he'd go into the office for twenty minutes and go do coke. <laughs> so like it was like I was I was like nine, uh, no I was like twenty at the time, uh-huh. and so like me and this other nineteen year old kid that were closing down the Olive Garden, and we're like fuck it, he's gonna be in there for twenty minutes. <laughs> then we go like like snatch a couple bottles and go throw them in the trunk and then come back. And in our heads, we're just kind of like, well, he's in there doing coke. That's his fault for right for for. 
being irresponsible. If you got busted, you could bust him, basically. We didn't even think that far away. We yeah. were just trying to. But you could. It's in karma. The, in the movie, in the um, in the screenplay, made for television version, you're like, what's the manager's name? Jerry. We'll say Jerry. Be like Jerry. Let's cut a deal. <laughs> I know you were in the room doing cocaine. <laughs> I know you were in the thing I can't remember doing cocaine. And I'd be crossing it and crossing my legs. Yeah. <laughs> wink, 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 wink. <laughs> <laughs> What do you say we just make this whole thing go away? And then he rips your head off because he's high on coke. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> with really dramatic music. <laughs> then he snorts you completely. <laughs> and then, then he sweats me out throughout the day. Yeah, <sighs> like sort of like Mike TV, <laughs> like I just come out in particles. And then, like what? Like Mike TV from Willow Walking to Chocolate Factory when he gets oh, zapped. Oh man, yeah, gotcha. Right. Oh yeah. What's his song? How's how, what's? Doesn't he have his own song? Yeah. Well, I mean, the Oompa Loompa said something. Yeah, but but doesn't yeah, he yeah. have a song like "I like TV"? <laughs> I can't. I don't know. I just made that one. Up. That's the you lost song from Willy Wonka. You know, oh, well, only, only the girls had songs. No, no, right? he had one. He had, he had one. one. It was, it was something girl. about like, like. No, that's the egg song. I want to be a star. I made that one up. I don't want to do homework. I yeah, want to be on I mean, TV. well, let's, let's uh, knock them out. There's I want today. I want tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm that's, thinking. Um, that's um Salt. Yeah. And then there's... um. What's the girl who uh, fills up and chews her gum and stuff? That's Violet, but I don't remember you know, I don't her having th- I don't think she yeah. has a song. Yeah, Augusta, I guess all, not all the kids no, have songs. Augustus no, Augustus doesn't have a song either. Yeah, he yeah. just falls yeah. in the just river. He's just like, Bobby, oh, Bobby. Oh, oh, I, I, oh, oh, I ate too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I wanted, I wanted chocolate. <laughs> That's German. a great character. <laughs> Augustus Gloop. <laughs> That's a really good character. Gene Wilder was amazing in, hey, in, in, in the original. You know who sucks? Tim he Burton. Was. <laughs> well, you know, I haven't seen Period. the new. I, I haven't seen the new version. Actually, it sucks. Don't waste your time. Because waste, I was a big he fan hasn't of the old off his goodwill yet. I'm, I'm, I'm still on, on this. Really? Side. What? Yeah. What? If, what has he made in the last 15 years that you like? Well, but before those 15 years is enough to. Uh, he's made yeah, some. But, he's but, made well, some no, cool wait, stills I, of Alice in Wonderland. Sleepy Hollow. I li- like. I like uh, that. That was, that was the last one. I like. That's the last one. I didn't like that one. Actually, you're right. I didn't. I think I really was excited about Sleepy Hollow, and then I was like, ah. Oh, come on, that Christopher happened. walking with the teeth and he's chopping off heads. Ah. I didn't say I it was terrible, it but I was just indifferent yeah. at the end. You should Planet watch. of the Apes was a big kick to the dick. Oh, hey. Planet of the Apes. It was a big shit. dick tie or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, last real Planet good of was, the Rape. Yeah, I, my Ed Wood was a really great one, I thought. Yeah. And then other than that, he just made crap. Well, what was awesome about Planet of the Apes was just when they show the show the monkey Lincoln, yeah. and then like, collectively <laughs> yeah. the whole audience goes, what the fuck? Fuck! <laughs> like, like, and the weird thing was, I think there was like eight different endings, and yeah, that's the ones yeah. that I chose. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to. Yeah, I, I wonder what remember. the other ones were. Like, he comes back to Earth, and there's a ape, <laughs> <laughs> like a giant apes live there now. It's like land of the giant apes. It's like, a hey, right audience, you know, you want to see another one of these. <laughs> <laughs> this is really setting it up for more. But I mean, like, actually, that movie had the worst. Uh, like uh, like rousing like let's do this speech but like Mark Wahlberg where like the apes are about to attack and, and he's like trying to get the humans ready he's like 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 he's basically just comes into a room and just goes like alright everybody uh, come on let's let's do this go and then there's just like a, <laughs> <laughs> there's just kind of Wait, split, what like, guys that was my speech before this podcast I was like alright guys uh, <laughs> men <laughs> stuff is hard <laughs> yeah, but yeah. if but it does we still do it okay go yeah <laughs> Yeah. We didn't land on Monkey Rock. Monkey Rock landed on us. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, monkeys and men. Uh, get away from me, you damn dirty ape. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, catchphrase. I remember that. Yeah. You know what? You're right. I was not that angry at Tim Burton, but now that you say it. Yeah. He sucks, man. He's totally crappy. Everything he makes is like a, a rehash of his like 80s to early 90s aesthetic. Like what? What was? Oh, that's true. Yeah, it, that's kind of annoying him repeating himself all the time. Which one was yeah. last? Uh, that's annoying. Batman or uh, uh, Ed think, Wood? What was his last good one? Re- well, which came first? You mean? Yeah, uh, uh, Ed Wood uh, came after Batman Returns. Yeah, yeah. Oh. A- Batman Returns was terrible. I liked it. I, I like it was I, funny. I like Beetlejuice. I like Pee Wee. I like Batman. I like Batman Returns. I like Edward Scissorhands. Frank and Weenie. I like I Returns like... more than the first Batman. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's, it, it, there's just more going on. I was bored. Bored. Like the, the whole like penguin funeral. Well, that well that scene's it slows down for because it's a sad scene. You know, it's it's just Tim Burton so misunderstood, <laughs> <laughs> and that's just a reflection of who he is inside. What about when penguin rips off that guy's nose with his teeth? Well, badass. Yeah, yeah I like parts of it. 
That's badass, man. You see when that teeth gets ripped off the nose? <laughs> yeah. It's badass, bad. man. There's blood everywhere and they're <laughs> trying to put makeup on him. He bit that nose off, made that dude ugly. <laughs> That's badass, man. When I was at, uh, I have a joke with my friends. When the Iraq War started uh, in 2003, we were watching CNN footage and it's just sort of like random streaming footage on CNN of like all uh, just Marines and people in the desert going crazy. And like you see like. F- Footage from a tank and an explosion off the side is like, and then you hear off in the corner, that's badass, man. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of like one of the favorite, I was watching, uh, I was watching, um, I think the Discovery Channel at some point, and it was a show about tornadoes. And uh, there was actually, you know, someone was filming a tornado. Uh, and you could see, I mean, it was clear as day. It was, it was pretty big. It was, you know, coming towards and. And I just remember uh, in the video, all of a sudden, like, I guess one of the neighbors just runs up. He has a hat, and I think it just said beer on it. And uh, he ran up, and he's like, it's a tornado. It's a tornado. <laughs> and then he just ran past the camera, and I'm just thinking, like, thanks. <laughs> kind of, you know, there's an F5, like, you know, 20 yeah, feet yeah. away. It's, like, ripping everything up. I don't know what you're filming. <laughs> Wait. We, our source comes from beer guy. <laughs> beer it was literally guy. like it said beer, and I wanted one of those hats beer. that says really cool. It just says beer, you know. Mm. I'm sure it's sold on the same rack as middle finger hat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like my favorite brand is generic. <laughs> now, did you guys grow up in a place that had tornadoes? I did. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh yeah, yeah you're from Tulsa, right? Yeah. So have you ever uh, experienced a tornado? Or not really. When I was a kid, oh, we did like disaster drills in elementary school and. There was like one night that I can remember where it was really bad. My parents were like, okay, let's all go in the hall, family. Wow. You know, and that, that, that was it. It was never like, I, I, I think just my part of town never got smothered by anything. But, if you ever, but did you have the basement shelter available if you had to go down there and like no, lock up? Oh, no, it wasn't even there. Oh. No, we didn't have that. We had a hallway. That was this, that was the closest thing to to a safety basement. Yeah. Oh. If you ever, I'm sure it would collapse and kill us all. If, if you ever want to experience a tornado, you can just, in the next bad storm we have here in California, uh, you can just go down to Long Beach because they actually just had a tornado down there. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a little... An F one. It's day after tomorrow, Steph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we get bad uh, weather, sometimes we actually do get little tornadoes out here. They kind of like, like knock over a truck. I'd, I'd like it. to get a experience a tornado earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> tornado, tornado earthquake. It's a tornado earthquake. Go. That sounds like a dessert at Dairy Queen. <laughs> that's like the. Uh, <laughs> that's like, like, like the perfect, bar. the perfect disaster, the perfect storm, the perfect disaster. Yeah. That that'll be the next movie, The Perfect Disaster. A tornado earth Kwani. It's all like five different disasters all in one. That'll be the next rolling. Yeah, there's gonna be, yeah. Yeah. It'll, it'll, be a volcano in there somewhere. There's it'll, gonna be a volcano. Uh, tor- probably an asteroid. Tor a tornado. Er, a cane, uh, it's a volcano. <laughs> it's a volcano earth Kwani. <laughs> <laughs> all the thing that is, kind of if, if you call it the perfect disaster, it. It, that movie has to be good <laughs> because if it's called <laughs> the perfect disaster and it's bad, then like all the critics are just going to have a field day. Right. Like uh, all they right. have to get George Clooney in it though. They have to get George Clooney. Actually, wait, hang on. I haven't seen 2012, but it looked like from the trailer, it kind of has all that stuff, right? Like I like that. You're, I feel like you're the first person I've ever, I've heard call it 2012 instead of 2012. Oh, yeah. is it like, 2012? It's, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, it's that, the same thing. That's a good like, point. That, it's 2012. Like, 2012 made it sound like classy and good, like 2001. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, that's oh, a good point. I got to see that 2012. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got more syllables now. Yeah. See, though, Kevin, 2012, it was, yes, it was a bunch of disasters. Uh-huh. But it wasn't all one disaster converging on one. In other words, like it wasn't like an asteroid hitting a volcano. Well, when a volcano under the off, ocean, there is kind of an earthquake. Tidal wave, yeah, you know? yeah but it would see, all, it would have to be all at the same time. Yeah, yeah, like one thing, one big, just horrendous thing. Yeah, yeah, and then the movie's over in like ten minutes. Yep, we should write it. Mm. Let's just think about it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you guys remember what happened uh, uh, when we uh, went out to lunch? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, just the other day. Yeah. Mm, uh, I, I don't quite remember, actually. What? You, you don't real quite remember? Uh, oh, yeah. You know what? I, let me just go think about it for a second, and I'll remember it. I, I, know, <laughs> I know I'll remember it. In just, in just a I mean, you, you know, it was pretty memorable. You'd think he would remember. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know what? Because he... he He's probably embarrassed. That's why he's like, "Oh, I don't remember what happened." Well, uh, there was some <laughs> loss. There was some loss of uh, collectible. Yeah. 
I mean, all yeah. All, the funny thing yeah, is, that's, I'm embarrassed. I I remembered it the whole time. I was hoping someone would change the subject. Well, the funny <laughs> thing is, Josh and everybody, I actually, I had a little recorder in my pocket. What? During the whole incident. Oh no! Not during the whole thing. The whole thing. Ah oh, shit! So. This you know, is, boy, am I gonna be humiliated in a second when you play it? You're not actually gonna play it, are you? I well, you know, I mean, Man, I you, think we kind of have to. Oh, but. geez, I can't believe you're doing this to me and yeah. everyone else. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty pissed at him, but this is kind of awkward for, yeah. uh, for our first guest. I guess. <laughs> anyway, I guess it is sweet revenge, huh? <laughs> I don't know why we're laughing. That doesn't make any sense. That we're well, laughing. go ahead and press play. I guess. All right, I'm hitting it now. Okay. Ugh, I'm never gonna eat there again. It wasn't so bad. Well, the service was good. By good, he means the waitress was hot. Yeah. Boobs. Yeah, she was pretty bright. Whoa, holy, what the? Oh man, we're stuck. Ah, uh, great. On the day I was gonna sneak out early. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, it's getting really hot in here. <laughs> I can't breathe. Hey, calm down. Come on, everybody. Look, look. It's going to start back up any minute now. We'll be dead any minute. Here, here I'll use the phone. Uh, oh, uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. 30 minutes? Okay, thanks. Hey, guys, it's going to be a while. Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, on the day I order chili, right, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, if we have to, I volunteer that we eat Ed first. What? You volunteer me? I'm starving. We just came from lunch. I'm I am starving. Well, you know, we could eat. Starving! Josh, just calm down, all right? I'll get you a baconator when we get out of here. Fuck, I'll buy you a pig. Just just look, we'll be out in a minute. Just relax. You're right. Oh, hey, did you guys see Madman last night? It was oh, awesome, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know. It was a great scene. Oh, huh? my, yeah. My, my favorite part was when that guy was drinking and being all sexist. <laughs> that was cool. Oh, what the hell? Hey, why are you putting salt on me? Oh, I'm trying to preserve your meat. We don't have a refrigeration system here, so just... Okay, Josh, I'll play. Uh, wh why do you want to eat me and not Kevin or Mike? Oh, well, Mike said he'd buy me a Baconator, and I need Kevin to repopulate the oh. world. Oh, hey, whoa. Don't worry. I have a plan. You'll like it. Okay, just stop touching <laughs> me. <laughs> he does have a point. So, uh, I say that, um, I say we, uh, eat what we can of Ed now, and then we dry the rest of his flesh by the lights. Yeah, we can make, like, uh, like an Ed Gelverky jerky. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> See? Yeah, that was good. If we can get out of here soon enough, we'll have a cool name, and we can bag it and sell it. Oh, and we could also put his bones as knickknacks to spruce up the place in this elevator, huh? Uh -huh Since we're gonna be uh -huh. coming back here and living here. Yeah, it, do it does have a gloomy je ne sais quoi. Hmm? Stop it! You guys are creeping me out. You guys are fucking sick for humoring him. Shut up, food! What? Don't listen to food. He's trying to keep us from survival. We are smarter than food. If cows could talk, they would say what he is saying uh, now. All right, Josh. Wait. Quit messing around, right? You're scaring Ed. Yeah, come on, man. I'm still cramped in here for this. Well, I can make room for one person. <laughs> Less, I mean. <laughs> oh, hey, 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 guys. He's got a rock. Put well, that down. Well, help, help me hold him back. I, I'm trying. Uh, look, he's getting away. I'm standing right here. Just chill out, Josh. Uh, I can't. I have the taste of blood in my mouth already. What? Where did this rock come from anyway? Uh, I use it to prop open the elevator door when I move my fish tank to my office. Oh, thank God. You don't believe in God. Uh, sometimes. Oh, oh hang, hang back, hang back, Josh. So, what was your plan to uh, repopulate the elevator just now? Mm, doesn't matter now. There goes my prince. Yeah, it was a pretty good recording, too. What? Yeah, the, the, the quality. I mean, for being in my pocket and all. Crystal. Yeah. Crystal. It was almost like you were holding it out in front of everybody's mouth and mm -hmm. just getting every single sound bite. I can feel like after that incident, though, everybody is obviously feeling a little awkward with each other. I am so humiliated. I, I was just ready to move on. The worst part about it is... I had no idea that when I talk, I sound like I'm reading lines. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you when people panic, yeah, it's like <laughs> sometimes it just becomes like, automatic, Josh. It comes, yeah. becomes automatic. You know, mm -hmm. I have the same problem all the time. Everything sounds rehearsed. Yeah, mm -hmm. even when I'm talking to people. <laughs> <laughs> Everything sounds rehearsed or not rehearsed enough. Mm. So, Josh, what else you got coming up uh, that you want to plug? 
Dish, where where can your fans come see you? Good question. My mom made a Facebook pan, fan page for me. Awesome. You know, so I, how, and I was thinking like, my uh, my brother was like, you should let mom make a Facebook page for you, and I was like, no, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> I'm not going to have a fan page on Facebook run by my mom. <laughs> and then I thought, actually, that's kind of funny. So, yeah. so I was like, okay, mom, go for it. How many followers do you have on it now? I don't know. I'm too cool to pay attention to. Uh, uh, I, I, I was, your, I was your 26th. <laughs> yeah. You were the 26th? Yeah. Okay, so I probably got 27, 28. Cool. <laughs> I'll, be, uh, I'll be 30. I, I, I clicked on it today. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I did it. Was there some good stuff on there? What? She posts some like videos and stuff like that, and like that's really cool. It's, it's a really good collection of actual things, you know. Like you can actually go look. She's like, she, my my mom is like the best mom ever, and she like, although embarrassingly, she finds everything on the internet, even if it's like, oh, I wish that I hope no one ever sees that. And so, the, do you have any control over her? Is she just like, no, nope, I'm putting it up. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't, I don't try to, you know, you, you can't stop a hurricane, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I'll like, can't a hurricane like, quick. Like, like piano recitals from like when you were seven. And <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Some sort of, well, luckily I have all the old uh, videotapes from childhood, but they're because they're on like a uh, high eight. So oh, yeah. I'm sure once I transfer them and send them back to her. Internet, you are welcome. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll put a link to it up on the on the website. Um, what else? What else do I have coming up? Well, there's the midnight show, which we talked about on the sixth of February, and that's every first uh, Saturday of the month. Yep. For those of you in Los Angeles that want to see an awesome show, go to the Upright Citizens Brigade to see that first Saturday of every month. Yep. At know. midnight. Yeah, it's. I don't have a ton of stuff uh, coming out. I've made, made been making a lot of videos lately. That's great. I just made a video with Brent Weinbach and Ryan Perez, which cool. I am excited to, to show the interworld whenever it's finished. Awesome. I made a funny video that's. I have like four videos that aren't done, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I think they're all funny. Are they all going up on YouTube? Oh, uh, they'll go. They'll go somewhere. I'll probably. You know what? They'll probably be on Funny or Die at least. Okay. Uh, or YouTube. I got one with Tony Sam, which, you know Tony? Yeah. He's yeah. really funny. Um, he and I made a video that we never finished, and so one day it'll be finished, and people will think it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing stand-up. I'm stand already up. funny. Why am I doing stand-up? I'm doing stand-up on uh, the 8th of February at the Public House. That's the only show I seem to have booked in my planner right now. Okay. Well, yeah. let's get you up at Punk House. <laughs> the All right. Um, Sounds like a dandy deal. Do you post um, your your shows and upcoming events anywhere in particular that we can send people to? Uh, I tr I try to. I send out emails. You know, I'm I'm kind of behind. The oh, I post on Witstream all the time. Okay. Oh, I'll probably. Uh, have you heard of Witstream.com? No, no, it's, not uh, yet. It's, it's I'm like addicted to posting on it. It's like uh, my favorite little comedy site. It's like comedy types post. Uh, you know, it's sort of like a best way to describe it, it's like a curated Twitter. And it's like uh, people post their funny little, you know, whatever their thoughts are, their jokes or whatever on there. And uh, you can comment on it. It's like conversation. So I post on there all the time. It's kind of like a joke exercise. Cool. And uh, so actually tonight there's a big show in New York where they're doing a, a Witstream show. And I think there's going to be one in L.A. I'm not sure where on the 25th out here if there is. Hmm. So if there's a Check witstream.com or whatever, and, and uh, I'm sure there'll be some sort of information about a show. Yeah, that's cool. I'll have to check it out. Excellent. I haven't even heard Yeah, it. that sounds cool. Yeah. Thank you so much, Josh, for coming on the show. My pleasure. Um, and yeah. for being the first guest. Oh, my double pleasure. <laughs> this is our first. My ribbed pleasure. Our first thank you for coming on the show. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This is history. All right. Or did we thank me at the beginning? Uh, uh, the well, it's a thank you sandwich. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah, all it's just, one kind of long. It's thing. all complete now. I guess. And then when you come back, we'll be even more prepared. And, oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Josh. Yay. For this next part of the podcast, we're going to talk about what's on everybody's mind, on everybody's tongue, the word on the street, daybreakers. <laughs> uh, I got to admit. The I, movie or the breakers? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta admit, I like the movie. You know, I uh, I didn't have much expectation going into it. Yeah, we we uh, we all saw it together at ArcLight yep. uh, two Tuesdays ago, which yeah. is something we're we do. We're not only coworkers, but we're actually friends. Yes. Yeah, we do this a lot, though. We like to review movies, and so we see the movies together, and it's, it's yeah. just fun. I think it improves upon our natural chemistry. Well, well, the way I thought about Daybreakers, the way I thought about Daybreakers, I'm drunk. Anyway, uh, <laughs> also by the end of the show, it's uh, you know. One of our sponsors we're trying to get is uh, Tito's Vodka, mm -hmm. and we drink it every show, 
Yeah. And uh, hopefully, the more we drink, uh, we will actually get that as a sponsor as well. I think that's how it works. The more you consume right. of whatever you're consuming, like the more they want to sponsor you. Yeah. And I don't think the uh, the uh, the people behind Tito's are as crazy as our current sponsor. So, uh, you know, <laughs> might be good if we you can wean out of the, the old sponsor. I meeting with Tito's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, and I actually recorded it. Uh, here oh, push. no. <laughs> uh, push play. You should go see Daybreakers. <laughs> it's a good movie. Okay. Get out of my office. Uh, but, but Mr. Tito, I, I would just need a little money for my radio show. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. No, no money. No, no. Where are you from? Where do you want me to be from, big boy? <laughs> are you coming on to me? No, 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 no. No coming on, no. I, well, quit unbuttoning my shirt. Oh, you like it? You're a big boy with No, big, I don't like it. Big boy with his big shirt. Forget it. I'm going to Tom Perros. <laughs> Hola. <I'm Tom> <laughs> <laughs> no, but Daybreakers, though. Daybreakers. It was a fun time. Awesome movie. Um, f- some uh, good ensemble. There's uh, Ethan Hawke, uh, Willem Dafoe, Sam Neill, and in order of awesome in the movie, that was uh, 3 1 2. As in, it, it should have gone Willem Dafoe, Sam Neill, Ethan right. Hawke, in order of. Like who was most awesome in the movie? Well, if I could get like a, a like a grade, a, a letter grade from all of you, uh-huh. uh, what what would Kevin? What's yours? B. Okay, yeah, I'd say a strong B. Yeah, um, I I said a B plus actually. Yeah. I, I was expecting garbage, and I, and I saw Avatar right before I saw this. Uh huh. So like, I I didn't care about anyone or anything in Avatar. And so I thought this one was going to be terrible. And then when I actually saw it, I was just like, oh, I'm actually intrigued and care about these people. And, and I, ap- I appreciated that they went into so much detail depicting a, like what a world run by vampires would be like. I mean, it kind of fell off towards the end once the action started ramping up. But like all the establishing stuff in the first mm-hmm. half with like, you know, like, like, like where they go for their blood and like like what kind of cars they drive it's, it's kind of a cool like i mean I, I we can all agree probably right guys that like i mean this is the the decade of vampires because they are yeah. very popular right i'm not to say like the wolfman is coming out very soon mm-hmm. that may change things maybe we will get into the furry lovable v- werewolves you know but right now it is the vampire so it's but kind it's of gonna be hard for va- for werewolves to become as popular as vampires because you can't be like an emo girl and be like oh i'm i'm I'm," like werewolves are are normal people and then they just go nuts they're kind of like the hulk except they turn into an animal where vampires are always it's like it's like 20 24 7 they're trying to seduce you and like yeah attend to your every whim so you'll be there but you see i think a werewolf is so uh mysterious in a lot of ways because he's leading two lives you know I mean, don't women love that? That kind of idea of, you know, mystery? Like, like we love the no, idea. Oh, my girlfriend hates that. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, mine does too. But I, the idea that, uh, you know, there's a, the, the CIA agent, right? Uh-huh. Two people, right? Or the, uh, the assassin, right? Two people. Well, the werewolf is just that. Like, well, normal the- guy by day, and then... Well, that's furry kinda, creature by night. It's kind of taking the yeah. bad boy to its extreme, mm-hmm. like, you know, like, you know, like... A lot of girls like a bad boy who rides a motorcycle and a Harley Nut who runs around and, you know, eats yeah, people. Yeah, a werewolf is kind of like a blackout drunk. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, totally. Where a vampire is just like, hey, I'm, I'm cool. Now I'm cool and aggressive, you know, uh, at nighttime. But, like, with the werewolf, it's just kind of like, hey, I'm, I'm Joe Average. And then, no, I'm yeah. eating you. Rah! And, like, if, yeah, it's like a, like the werewolf, like, you have to tie him up in chains. Otherwise, right. he'll, he'll fucking kill you. A vampire, it's like, do what you want. You know, I'm your love slave. <laughs> That's me speaking as a teen girl, by the way. That wasn't that wasn't Kevin Ford just now. <laughs> Did, um, and I, I digress, though. And we'll get back to vampires. But you uh, know, Werewolf is a new movie coming out. It looks really Wolf cool. Man. Or, the, well, the, sorry, uh, Wolfman. The sorry. Wolfman, yes. Yeah, the remake. Right. But you know what's funny that I noticed? I was watching the previews, but Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. Looks the same as when he was in Dracula, which was probably. That was ten years ago, uh, more than ten years. That was eleven. Ni- that was ninety two, I think. Yeah, like do you, you, you guys remember uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, the remake with Keanu yeah. Reeves? Yeah, that was a uh, Winona Ryder. Yeah, that was like yeah. about, right? about sixteen years ago. Yeah. I, so I mean, isn't it weird? I mean, I don't know if you Ed, have you seen the uh, the the preview? 
Have you seen Anthony Hopkins in it? Yeah. You know, he quick, looks he the same. Mm-hmm. Do you think he sold his soul to the devil? No, I think he just quit drinking, so he stopped aging. <laughs> You know, I, th- I didn't know he was an alcoholic. Well, all right, I, I'll, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll posit this. Um, I think my grandpa has looked at the same for the past twenty years or so. I think once you get to a certain point of mm-hmm. age, like you just so you're saying your dad's a vampire. Well, no, my grandpa's a vampire, but no, I, I, yeah, I'm saying for. Uh, I, I think just yeah, once you get to a certain age, right, you just constantly look the same, like the principal from Back to the Future. Oh, okay, you know, it's like <laughs> he's always gonna look the same. He's he, gonna he be Michael like, J. Fox. He was the principal <laughs> actor in Back to the. <laughs> He looks totally different now than, than he... <laughs> Michael G. Fox does not age. He just d- dissolves. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's true. Oh. The poor uh, it's a, it's the a poor sad man. fact, you know. I didn't want to bring it up, but <laughs> somebody says Michael J. Fox, and then we all know what we're thinking. Okay. I'm a big fan of Michael J. Fox. I, I uh, loved his work. And, uh... You know, they're remaking Teen Wolf. See, I can't With see who? that because I always... They, they haven't cast it yet, but yeah. the, the big change, it's, it's not going to be a comedy. What? Don't oh, I do it? You can't do that. Yeah, it's gonna be like, like, no, seriously. What would it be like if there was a werewolf at a high school? Yeah, it'd be a fucking slaughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I mean, you can't do that to so Team Wolf. Like, I mean, yeah, but the part of the charm of Team Wolf is that he's playing basketball. Yeah, I think. Yeah, they're changing the sport. Too. I think instead of basketball, it's uh, gonna be like football or something. Yeah, it's not gonna be basketball. Oh, that, that, that that's Air Bud Golden Receiver. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you yeah. know, I've actually seen Air Bud. What? <laughs> I've actually seen Air Bud. Uh, all of them? Yeah. I, no, I, I, saw, I saw like two of them. And I mean, the puppies are cute, I gotta admit. Yeah. With the remake of The Wolfman, <laughs> I, I think the world is heading to fur. So ultimately, like dogs are going to have a really good future in movies. Yeah. Uh, do they ever have a downtime? No, I mean, yeah, it's a good point. I mean, you've uh, had... Uh, Benji, Lassie. Lassie. Yeah. Uh, uh, what Rin, was it? Rin, long- Rin Tin Tin. Rin Tin Tin. Yeah. Uh, what was it? The Journey or uh, the... Uh, 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 Homeward Bound. Homeward Bound. There you uh, go. Yeah, that's what uh, I was thinking of. Man's Best Friend with Ali Sheedy. Shirley Duvall. Uh, <laughs> oh, Ed. What? She's a good... She's a, she's a fine actress. <laughs> anyway. Why did I get a, you know she's crazy, right? Have you heard about that? No, I haven't. She's no. fucking nuts. She, really? she Yeah, like uh, she, she's living in some small town somewhere and she's totally paranoid that uh, UF, UFOs with aliens are trying to abduct her. So like there's reports where like... Like the, the like the guy that runs the hardware store like says that she like she'll come in every once in a while trying to get like duct tape and like hammers and nails and like just be like mouthing about like like UFOs and aliens like trying to come get her so she has to like protect her backyard. Yeah, she's <laughs> she, she's totally lost it. Yeah. It's just kind of funny. The lady I, from you know, the Shining. The Lady from Shining. Yeah, and you know, MS and Storybook Theater and Olive Oil from Popeye. Yes, <laughs> Kevin. You know why I think she's nuts? Not because she believes in aliens, but. The fact that she can reinforce her backyard to prevent the aliens from coming in, I think that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> aliens, aliens wasn't enough. Uh, no, I mean I, the fact that you reinforce your backyard so that the aliens can't get in. Aliens are going to get in no matter what. No, she, she, she has just she, me. Like she, if, if she aliens put a bunch exist, of, she put a bunch of like Reese's pieces and bear traps. <laughs> let's th- let's let's think about this for a minute. <laughs> aliens, right? If they're visiting, they're obviously very high, highly intelligent beings. So uh-huh. by basically reinforcing your yard, <laughs> do you think an alien would come down? Well, you're like, like, I can't get into the house. If I'm an alien and I'm looking for people to steal, like I'm staying away from the house with barbed wire. You know, I'm like, uh-huh. eh, like I'll just go over, you know, another state. <laughs> Does that, that suck for us as a human race? Like, oh, they're smarter than us just because they got, were able to get here and we can't really go <laughs> too much beyond our front lawn. Well, uh, uh, yeah, that's technology for you. Well, anyway, I'm sorry. I digress so much from uh, 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 talking about Daybreakers, but I'm just saying, like, it is the age of the vamp- the vampire right now. They're very popular. Uh-huh. And, uh, but one so cool... so it's, so, it's a, so we should appreciate when somebody can come out with a unique vampire It is a very idea. unique yeah. thing, and I think yeah. it was very cool that the idea that blood became money, it was the currency. Yeah. And, and, and was, I think that was unique. I don't think that's been done in, in, in and, a vampire movie And before. not only money and currency, but it was also a, a, like a status symbol. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like, who can afford the most pure... Yeah, there yeah. Was, like you jabs know. at cigarette companies and jabs at oil companies. And yeah, that. the fundamental thing I got out of it was like... We always define, you know, money and currency as like the status. You know, if you look at the movie Titanic or whatever, it showed the status level of people, but it was based on money. But it's funny in this movie because if you take money away and you take everything away, uh-huh. there's still a status symbol of some sort because, like, it's it's almost like humanity will find it's like that Doctor Seuss book with the sneeches and the stars on bars. <laughs> right, there's always something. 
that's going to like separate you. You know, there's always going to be yeah. something. There's that's something gonna there that's going to yeah. differentiate you from people. You're yeah. always going to yeah people. Because, humankind is always yeah. going to fall into certain cliques. Yeah, because if there's no money, then then it's going to be the taller, the more fit guy, right? You know, because yeah. money balances everything out. Because if you're like, you know, short and fat, and well, okay, if you're me, but <laughs> if you have a lot of money, <laughs> uh, you know, how much then, money does it take to compensate for short and fat? What, what's the number? Oh, me specifically? Eight dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Ed being the most lovely person in. Oh, on he's the a planet. teddy bear. Everybody yeah. calls. Everybody, everybody loves Ed. Hey, I lost twelve pounds. This year so far. Hey, you know what? Speaking of weight loss, um, I uh, I broke my my personal record on the scale this morning. Did Wait, you? I've uh, lost eighteen pounds. That's amazing. Since I started eighteen pounds. Yeah, like, 18 and, and pounds. Kevin, when did you start your? Uh... Uh, sometime in November. Ed Ed lost faster than me. Like you've only been doing it for like what a month. I started January first, but I've gone to the gym every day with the exception of two days. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's better than me. I have a job. So, uh, <laughs> I I have a job. Eh, fake. No, job. guys, congratulations. That's really cool. I mean, are there any secrets to your diets that you're, you know, stay away from bread? Bread, really? But you know, I've I've always heard that like carbohydrates are actually healthy for your brain to yeah. some degree. Well, but, carbohydrates uh, it has been proven the uh, like they stimulate your your happy the happy part of the brain, mm-hmm. whatever makes you happy. So if you so if you cut out bread altogether, you're gonna get depressed. What do you what do you what's your secret, Ed? What like what's the well? The main? Me, it's like I can like I don't really eat that much or overeat that much, mm-hmm. but you know you can eat what you want as long as you actually move. You know, yeah, eat right. For thirty minutes to an hour, and that's my. Have thing. you guys ever followed? The you Arnold? can eat you can eat what you want as long as you don't eat what you want all the time. Right. Have you guys ever followed the Arnold Schwarzenegger diet? Uh no, actually. I mean, I hear it's like ma- it's mostly like based on. Pro- <laughs> I, I I hear it's mostly based on protein, you know. Uh huh. And he's like very well, you know, Arnold. You know, he, he's always going out to fancy restaurants. I'm sure. You know, the man's yeah. a million. You know Did you see him at the Golden Globes when he was <laughs> when he was? Did you see him at the Golden Globes when he was talking about where he was uh introducing James Cameron? For for the award and like, I, I, heard, I've, I've heard things. I believe he 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 mentioned the movie Avatar or or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> like I can't believe that that guy actually like is married. Like I, uh-huh. I, I, I like like what the hell was dating like for him? There, I guess there's somebody for everybody. Yeah, yeah. I can't uh, imagine. You know, I mean, you're like a muscle bound guy. Uh-huh. You know? Obviously, in the best shape. You're like a gladiator. Yeah. Essentially, you are a gladiator. But I don't know. I, I mean, he played Conan. Yeah, but still, like that's the barbarian. Oh, he, oh, I thought you meant O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, like wh- whoever. I mean, Maria Shriver. Yeah, she must have been. I, I would have been intimidated as shit to be going out with that man. Yeah, I, I think like anybody going on would dates, be. like you know. Like, hey guys, I was just surfing online right now, and somebody actually had a tape recorder on their first date. Really? Or their last date as single people. <laughs> Wow, uh-huh. Are you, you're not saying it. no, 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 no. This is this is real. No, I I read this on TMZ. This is an Did, actual really? recording that somebody. Yeah, I think somebody worked at a restaurant and they were able to get like they were yeah, able, yeah. able to tape this. They hit a microphone. Yeah, You've got to be kidding. Just me. push play. This is real. <laughs> Maria. Yes, Arnold. This is so romantic. Look at the pretty napkins. Yes, they're very nice. And the pretty candles. Look! Uh Uh-huh. No! You're not looking! Look now! Do it! I I see them. The candles are very pretty. Maria! Yes. I love you. That's nice. Say you love me too, damn it! Do it! Do it now! I love you too. Yeah! you You make me happy! Is there anything else I can get for you this evening? Some coffee, dessert? Cotton candy, now! Uh, that's not actually on the menu. Ah, ah. Uh, but, but I'll see what I can do. Go, go now, get to the kitchen. Yes, sir. Ah. What is it? It's just, I want tonight to be perfect. What do you mean? Ah, I'm so nervous. I can't wait any longer. What are you doing? Yeah, the floor is cold. Here, take this. Take it. Okay. Open it. 
Now, do it! Wow, uh, Arnold, this is... Marry me, goddammit! What? Marry me! Say yes now! Do it! Do it now! Say it! Uh... Say yes or I'll kill you! Yes! Yes, I'll marry you! Yeah, you made me so happy! Maria! Yes! Remember when I told you I'd marry you last? Uh... I lied! What? It's from my movie! I'm being funny, dammit! I, I don't. Yeah, it wasn't funny. Stop the sketch. Stop it now. Who are you talking to? Now, damn it. It's not funny anymore. Stop the sketch. Do it now. Stop it. That's amazing. Wow. The sound quality was so good for just like an audio cassette. I know. I can't, you know, that's one thing, guys. I'm actually an audio engineer, and like, uh -huh. I can't believe the way technology has gotten so great. Yeah. That people can go out there and you know like it's almost better than a phone like capturing video audio is the main you know thing like you can capture great audio these days the way of the future yeah i just can't believe it happened that way i mean no i can believe it and, and, that's and she said yes that sounded like a first she, date and he and she said yes she said yes <laughs> even after he said stop the sketch stop the sketch <laughs> i mean like, <laughs> Perhaps he may have had yeah, a few yeah. too many to drink that night. I don't know. He's an uh, actor. He's an actor. He, he wanted cotton candy. I he, think he was. he's an actor turned uh, governor. He, he's a, well, he sounds very intense and like that's you know like you, you can't make that stuff up. You know like that's exactly how I would have pictured it. Yeah, I totally had to be make real. that stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> really, Ed? What? I don't think you can. I don't think you can. I defy you. I defy you to make that up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of amazing these days, though, too. There's, there's just a lot of, uh, you know, recording out there in the world, I think. So I think in this show... There's a lot of recording out in the world? Yeah, like, there's a lot of people just recording their, oh, their daily yeah, lives. So you, I think yeah. in this show, we're going to have a lot of fun experiences with that, you know? Hell, we're Speaking recording which, ourselves right we're now. We're recording yeah. real lives. Yep. People record with audio and video, but sometimes people record things in book. And I you believe we saw that? a movie... About a certain book. Just Eli. last week. Oh, right. Yeah. The Book of Eli. Yes. Which is our next movie uh, that we are going to review for this week. Once again, the three of us went out. Uh, instead of, uh, yeah, Daybreakers, we saw at Arclight. This one we saw at Grauman's Chinese. The famous Grauman's Chinese which with is, all the handprints. Of, I got to admit, it's, it's really fun. Like, when you walk into that theater, it's like, it's, oh, it's, it's amazing. Cool. Yeah. It's I like, mean, they have all the carved wood and everything. It's like it's a beautiful theater. Like the seats we sat in have probably been sat in by so many Hollywood celebrities watching premieres there. A lot of history in that place. It's yeah. a lot of history. Yeah. Yeah. It's about like coming stairs to go to the bathroom. I in the bathroom was. <laughs> yeah. I was I was commenting with Ed. The bathroom was a little creepy when it, we went down there because there was. Uh, it's huge. Yeah. With so many urinals. Yeah. It's, there's it's, also it's, a it's weird like a amount locker of locker room for like like the Detroit Bulls. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you know, like <laughs> when I went to go pee after Book of Eli, like uh, th this uh, this guy came in <laughs> with these like two little kids, and I'm like, oh man, did, did they just watch that movie? Like that's messed up, man. You shouldn't take little. That's what I said. To, to, like, <laughs> do you remember that's what I said? To, we saw those same those same kids. Oh, and those, they, yeah. Those kids actually looked a little creepy, if you ask me. They looked uh, foreign. Oh, uh, well, I yes, maybe foreign, but I remember talking to Ed after the movie, mm -hmm. and I'm like, because the Book of Eli, let's be honest, we weren't that impressed by it. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, but well, I said, what like, do you give it? I don't know what's. I, I gave it about a C minus. Yeah, I maybe agree. maybe a C. I what? like some of the way some of the things were filmed. You know, I'll even say, all right, sober C minus, drunk C plus. Yeah, because, because I didn't hate it. I didn't it, hate it, it either. It, no, it, it just and I and I didn't not like it. It was just well that had a beginning, middle, and end, and mm -hmm. I'm forgetting about it now. It was, one of, it was one of those movies where there was stuff I liked and stuff I didn't like. Like, in sections where, like, yeah. I'd be stuff into I it. Stuff I liked I'd seen before. Right? Like, I'd be into it, and then, they're, then, then they would start doing something and be like, this is, oh, okay. I, I but, didn't, but then there was, like, another sequence, like, literally, like, maybe two yeah. minutes where would be like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. And then back to, like, five minutes of shit, and then back to, like, two minutes of awesome. Well, I didn't think anything was, like, shit. It was just kind of like, okay, let's. Well, like, boring. Like, yeah. like five minutes of boring. Like, I get that he had to walk. A lot, but we, we didn't have to see so much of it in slow motion, you know. Like, yeah. like I get, it. yeah, he, 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 yeah, he has to walk a lot. I yeah, get. We could see Mila Kunis walk in slow motion yeah. all, all they want to show us. I Je think jeans in the future are very tight. Yeah, I, you know, I, <laughs> you know, I, I wish. They, like I said, I, <laughs> I think like, I said this to both of you, but I'm like, man, if if women look like that in the wasteland of 
uh, post-apocalypticism, uh-huh. uh, then, man, that's pretty good, good future. You know, originally... As far part- as I can say, I, think, I don't think the human race <laughs> is going to have much trouble like procreating after that, you know? Originally, her part <laughs> was supposed to be played by uh, the Twilight Girl. Oh. But they oh, could, yeah. But they couldn't get the Twilight Girl. Because so she was the Runaways. Probably. So, so, so they got the, uh, the Family Guy girl instead. You know, I thought was funny was uh, <laughs> when you were talking about like how they would dress in the future. Like, what if they were dressed like in uh, like in the early '80s? What we thought the future would be dressed like? Like they were dressed like <laughs> Superman's <Yeah>. parents <laughs> or the Coneheads, <laughs> like, uh-huh. like, like <laughs> just weird big gowns with foil. Yeah, like this is all we have after the blast. It was. It, it is pretty interesting though. Like in a post-apocalyptic time, you probably figure like. Things are gonna look pretty messy, but actually their clothes look pretty good in my opinion. Like, uh-huh. I don't know if there was Max. like, was, I don't know if there was some like warehouse, like some uh, urban outfitter that just got was untouched, but it, it felt like everybody was dressed from that. Kind of, kind of, yeah, look, look at Abercrombie, Abercrombie kind of, and Fitch, well, yeah, yeah, just, just some yeah. something untouched by the bomb. Well, it's better than like whatever the it was. Mad Max, where like everyone dresses like all of a sudden, like after the nuclear war, like everyone's in a bondage. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. just like, say it, Ed. Hooligans. They dress like hooligans. Well, they're like, we love we love athletic equipment and bondage gear. <laughs> yeah, it was like shoulder pads and mohawks. Yeah. Like, that was the raisin du tier. <laughs> I've talked about this before, but I my favorite thing about the Mad Max uh, saga is that, like, the first movie took place in normal time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah I've heard this, yeah. Okay. And, and then, like... Uh, what, which like was it Road Warrior first or Mad Max first? Mad Max first. Mad, Mad Max, Max first. was the original. Yeah. Road Warrior was the second one, and then when when that one started, they're like, "Hey, when we last left our hero, the nuclear bomb hit." But anyway, <laughs> enough about that. So this is where he is now. Let's go. And like we never like said like what? What, are you, what the hell are you talking about? We're just like okay. Oh yeah, wow, yeah. cool. You know what's amazing about uh, Mad Max? It it was such a popular popular movie. It like actually bled into the hip hop world because uh, <laughs> California Love. Uh, which you know, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Doctor Dre it's based off a of Thunderdome. Yeah. Doctor, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, it uh, in two Tupac. Uh, I uh, mean, it was, it was uh, basically Tina like, Turner. Tina she Turner, <laughs> like I mean, she didn't need another hero. She's the vanguard yeah. of the hip hop. Which scene. you know, I have yeah. to say, like, I love California Love. That's a great song. You know, I never get into it. I'm from. <laughs> I'm honest. I think it's a great song. I, I, I think it's overrated. But the video I thought was really cool because they actually like. It was like Mad Max, but like in the hip hop world. I thought it looked like they spent too much money on a crappy song. I thought it was a good song. I will disagree with you. I will agree to disagree with you. All right. Well, that's... I liked I liked the uh, the synth riff in that, uh-huh. and uh, I don't know, just the whole like blinging it up with you know California. I thought it was pretty cool, like the whole West Coast thing. Well, differences in opinions is what makes us what we are, and we're human, and mm. that's a beautiful thing. Now, yeah. this is this is a real feeling that I have. Is it weird that I'm more scared of Suge Knight than I am Osama Bin Laden? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so because uh, Vanilla Ice uh, was actually uh, held out of a window. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you or, remember that story? I, I know. Or but uh, off like, a balcony, I think. He, or, I think sorry, yeah. He was held out of a window. or Yeah, you're right. Off a of balcony, like on the third story window or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Balcony or whatever. Right. And... Uh, so he had to give away all of his rights to his songs. So he's probably more afraid of Suge Knight than yeah. Osama Bin Laden. It's weird. Afraid. That guy became a myth, like, in jail. Suge Knight? Yeah, Suge Knight, when he went to jail, on the streets, he became more of a myth than anything. And, like, when he got out, a lot of, like, uh, Snoop Dogg and 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 uh, various other people that had dealt with him were actually scared of him. Well, I'm scared of him. I Maybe we'll have him on the show sometime. No! And and Ed I'll hasn't that day. you know and Ed, Ed, and Ed hasn't even heard the myth. Yeah, then then he'll hang us outside of your window, and we'll have <laughs> to give they, up all the rights to the forecast. Yeah, <laughs> look, the salesman that you are, you've already all the Don Perro money. You you've already gotten Don Perro. I have a feeling you might actually be be able to get Suge Knight to actually uh, throw some money at this podcast. I, I'm, no. I'm pretty sure. I think someday we'll have a recording of Ed's meeting with Suge Knight. I maybe, imagine maybe, that maybe, as well. Maybe not this episode, but you know, some somewhere there, in the yeah. future. Yeah, uh-huh. over my dead body. Mm-hmm. So, foreshadowing. <laughs> Overall, what do you, Kevin? What do you think? What Book of Eli? Should you people see it? What? Well, I mean, in your oh, opinion, oh, like if I if I was gonna see one of the two, yeah. Uh, I what do you say, uh, wait till Daybreakers comes out on DVD and then rent that. Mm-hmm. And Book of Eli, eh, stay away. It has a good twist at the end, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a rental, right? 
Yeah. You you know what? Yeah. yeah. You know what? Get Dave. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Uh, get Book of Eli on on Redbox. Uh huh. Yeah. Know, yeah. One of those well, one dollar rentals or on Redbox is one dollar. Yeah. Nice. Redbox is great. That's awesome. It's a good deal. Yeah. If you oh, like, yeah, well, if it's Netflix, yeah, and you're just like getting it for free on a, so, yeah, no, a subscription, it's definitely get both worth of them. watching. If it's, it's worth watching, free. both of them are worth watching if they're free. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one thing with all of us listeners is you have to know. We love post-apocalyptic movies, so like, oh, I'm a I'm a sucker for yeah. post-apocalyptic. We love it, and, and Gary Oldman as a villain. So, know, Kevin, I, I would you that. say like, uh, as a post-apocalyptic lover of film, uh-huh. Book of Eli, where does that rate? Oh, it, it rates pretty highly, actually. I, yeah, they, they, uh, the way they filmed it, I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, they, they have this like weird semitone color that 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 just added this. Cool yeah, and everybody's effect. wearing sunglasses, or yeah. else they go blind. Yeah, like there's certain details that are nice. Ed, what do you think? It's old, almost because it has an old west feel to it, like kind of like a almost almost like a spaghetti western post apocalyptic yeah, movie. movie. That's west. that's what I liked about it. That's what I liked about yeah. it. Yeah, like, uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Uh, if you're comparing it to other post apocalyptic movies, then yeah, then it's an eight. If you're comparing it to movies in general, it's uh, a low six. Okay, now that's a you know I agree. That's a good one other point. like I think on this podcast maybe we have like two mm-hmm. different levels. So this that's the reality level of like where the movie is right now. If you decide to say smoke out on hashish or weed or whatever you like, dust dust or, is what Kevin smokes, or or super dust, <laughs> super dust, uh, methamphetamines, whatever. Or um, I don't know what it is. It's in my closet. Or I booze. Put it in my pipe. Let's say like booze, right? <laughs> Let's say I you get a little. It. Little tipsy, a little nice for it. Drunk. Uh-huh. What would you say is the rating on the drunk scale for Book of Eli? We'll, we'll call it intoxication scale. Like you could be on any drug, whatever you want. I'd say just because it's almost two hours, like that hurts it. Like if if, like if we're going on drunk scale, like time is a huge factor. So and like under an hour and a half, like yeah, it gets extra points. That's a big statement because usually, like when you're intoxicated in some way, it's like it's enhanced, and it, you know everything is enhanced. Yeah, so, but yeah. at the same time, you get impatient. You know? right. It's like this is awesome. How come it's not over yet? What do you think, Ed? I had a few cocktails when we saw it, so I don't. Know, I think the same. Well, because I gave it the the scoring that. <laughs> but, okay, pretend you were sober. And oh, <laughs> if I was sober and I saw it, then I would have liked the movie. I guess four. <laughs> no, 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 I, no! I honestly feel like it was, it was. What was my scoring? That it was an you, eight. You, you said an eight uh, compared to post-apocalyptic movies. Yeah, and a low six compared to just in movies in general. You're yeah, right. drug or not? Yeah, that's how I feel. So, ladies and gentlemen, from our opinions, like you know, if you're on the intoxication scale and it's actually lower than the reality scale, it's probably a rental, right? Yeah, definitely a rental. Yeah, I I want to see that printed on the DVD box. <laughs> that entire the Ford ca- podcast says uh, if you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the drunk scale, uh, rent it. <laughs> yeah. Now this uh, this section of the podcast isn't just for talking about uh, movies; it's also for talking about uh, music, comic books, and video games. And a very special video game came out this week uh, on the Kong Xbox Country and PC. <laughs> <laughs> more important, Ed. More mind blowing. More epic. It's called Mass Effect Two. I love it. A sequel to the greatest Xbox game ever made, according to IGN.com. I'm Actually, yeah. Bored. Well, Ed, you you have a Wii, so whatever game you're playing, you can announce that. But right now, I think Mass Effect Two. Mass is, Effect Two is, is probably fantastic. It, now, Mike, I gotta ask you something because. Sure. Uh, the first time you play Mass Effect, your choices carry over into part two. Yeah. Now, in the first game, I fucked the blue chick, and you fucked Ashley. Yes. Now, at the beginning of Mass Effect 2, when your ship is being destroyed, and like... Ashley's there. See, with me, it was the blue chick. See, with me, it was Ashley. That's because you had sex with her. The choices, yes. Yeah, see, that's... Isn't that awesome? Yes. Like, like... I didn't know that, actually, Kevin. I actually... I didn't know that that yeah, was I, a, I, Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. That was a plot change but yeah like because in mass effect 2 yeah i i screwed ashley uh-huh. she was there and i told her to get out so yeah she's yeah still, get in the escape she's pod. still yeah. alive in my thing so it was actually the blue chick for you yep exactly that is amazing if you ask me i think so too and like I w- I would, a, a new game that comes out mm-hmm. and mind you you don't have to play the game like playing part one you can actually start it with part two normal but the fact that you played part one uh-huh. And that carries over. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Like, first game to ever do that in history, as far as I know. 
Me too. I Mass Effect probably... 2. Play it. Go buy it. Play it. The story is amazing. 9.5 out of 10 so far. And it's going to be a movie pretty soon, so... Eh. I think it's going to be a movie. What's the point? It's already a movie. Play it. it. It's I mean, yeah, movie. honestly, it's like the closest thing uh, video game. You know, they're trying to relaunch the Mortal Kombat franchise. As oh, well. yeah. They're going to make a new Mortal Kombat movie. I yeah. wish they would make a good Street Fighter 2 movie. Like, I love that game. Street Fighter 2 is like one of my favorite games of all time. Is it really? Every, Ed, what? Are you a fighter? You're a fighter game fan? Uh, yes and no. Like, I, I didn't like playing Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I haven't even seen the movies, but I would watch them. Yeah. Um, but Man. Street Fighter 2 is, is my favorite. Like, like, That's really cool. You know why it's my favorite? Like, oh, because... it's not. That's <laughs> lame. No. Like... <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's my favorite because like I used to play it like at, at this old pizza place and it uh-huh. was just a standalone arcade unit. Street, uh-huh. st- the Street Fighter 2. Yeah, yeah so for me it was like a uh it's kind of a memorabilia kind of thing. Yeah, it Who's was a, it was a Pizza Hut. That's where we had our machine. Mine yeah. was Lampos Pizza in the South Bay mm-hmm. and uh my friend and I used to go there and play it all the time. And the first place in town that had Mortal Kombat was our 7-Eleven down the street from the junior high. Yeah. yeah Who, that's who's your Street Fighter guy? Blanca. Mm. Oh, I'm a, Blanca. Yeah. I'm a huge Blanca fan. The guy him. that stretches arms out? No, that's no. Dalsum. Oh, that's Dalsum, yeah. But Dalsum is my number two. I like, I like him because Dalsum. you could like, reach like really far, yeah. Oh, and he had yoga that, flame. That you're not very good. <laughs> but no, I, I like the ones who are fun to play with. If, if I mean business. I don't, pl- I don't play to win. I play to have fun. If, uh, if I'm playing to destroy, Guile. Um, if you're playing to cheat, Guile. How is that cheating? Because he's got the stupid uh, flash kick and with the sonic booms. They, they give him th- his it's arse. stupid. His it's like arse. saying, oh, those those porcupines, they have their stupid quills <laughs> to protect them from predators. I'm saying his arsenal oh, is. Oh, that stupid ninja has those stupid swords to, to for, so he can do his mer- no, mercenary no, he, jobs. He, he's, he's, a, he's, he's overqualified. He's overmatched. He's got too. He's got too many weapons in his arsenal. I'm just saying, like, but if I'm showboating, like, like if I was gonna fight you, uh-huh. now that you told me like where your skill level is, and then I would be Zangief. Oh, 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 for those of you out there who don't realize, that was a huge burn. <laughs> 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 yeah, because yeah. uh, <laughs> Zangief is the bitch of the Street Fighter. Two. Did he even make it in the movie? I don't think he was in the movie, was he? Uh, you know, I I haven't seen him. Like. I wanted I wanted to see uh, the Street Fighter Two, the Legend of Chun Li, or whatever that movie was called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, I that. But I heard so many people were just like, it, "It's it's awful." I was like, "Oh, oh, oh but it's like, <laughs> like I know it's awful. It's a movie about Chun Li specifically. Hey. Uh, like, it's gonna be awful." But Chun Li's cool. But oh, I know she she does the the heel taps. Yatta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Chun Li just showed up, everybody. <laughs> Chun Li's here. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, Yatta. <laughs> Chen Li? Do you, uh, do you work at the Tito's <laughs> vodka distillery? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, okay, okay. Back to, back to movie adaptions. All right. Wait, the Mortal Kombat. You were Chen Li the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> Ed, it's me. It's Kevin. I'm, I'm, I'm three feet away. Oh, let me put my boner away. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but, uh, yeah, if, but if you're going to make a, a, uh, a movie out of a fighting game, I think the Mortal Kombat story makes a lot more sense than Street Fighter. Like, Street Fighter has no story. There is no story. It's just a bunch of dudes who don't know each other from across the world hitting each other. At least yeah, Mortal but Kombat. the gameplay of Street Fighter 2 is so much better, so that's why but my how loyalty... Does that, lo- but how does that translate into a movie, though? Like, Mortal Kombat, it's like good, evil, there's like a there's like a portal to another world you know, I where have you got to, mutants. I have to agree with Kevin. I think, like, Double Dragon actually had more of a plot than Street Fighter did. Yeah, you're right, Mike. Yeah. Street Fighter 2 has no plot. I think, like, Double Dragon, that was a fun game because, like, you were fighting for your girl or something, you know? And then... And, 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 yeah. I mean, really, you were. But so yeah, Street Donkey Fighter... Kong. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> well said. Hey, so uh, first episode of the the Fortcast done, coming to a close. And and you know what? If you didn't hear a good chunk of this, it's because our producer Mike Cosentini cut out all the boring parts. <laughs> <laughs> As we were drinking vodka, Tito's yeah. brand vodka, and waxing off. I should say there's no boring parts with these guys here. So you if know. this show is only ten minutes long, I won't be surprised, and I won't blame you, Mike. This is gonna be. Uh, I'm very excited about this. 
if if Kevin's voice shows up in this podcast, I blame you, Mike. <laughs> oh, for those of you out there who don't know, that was a burn. <laughs> no, I just say like if you like what you heard, you know, if you like playing video games, you like seeing uh, movies, B movies. If you like movies, re- if you like reading comic books, comic books, all that stuff. I mean, look forward to this. If you like uh, alternative music, this is all the stuff we're going to be talking about, and uh, we're going to have some amazing guests on because uh, you know. And lots uh, of advice of how to pick up chicks. Not really, but <laughs> we should do that. I looked into mine. <laughs> We're gonna have a lot of new, uh, new audio clips, you know, just from out in the the world, the living. Yeah, live recordings mm-hmm. of spontaneous events. And uh, I think uh, at the end of the show, you should plug uh, Punk House, you know? Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock at the <laughs> Westside Comedy Theater in Santa Monica uh, is the Ed Galvez Punk House. First of all, there's free beer. Uh, and the best uh, in underground heroes and mainstream comedians uh, perform for you. Um, and I host it. If you're in Los Angeles, it's a great show to see. Awesome comedians. I also agree that the Punk House is a good show. Because Kevin actually performs in Punk House sometimes. He's a stand-up comedian himself, so yeah, he performs out. No. He writes sketches. He's a brilliant guy. Someday I'll be worthy of Punk House. He's an excellent like improver. You've done it many times. Yeah, but you know, like I'll, I want to be, I want to be, the, I want to be the best. You I want to well, be the best you've ever had. Kevin, you realize when you say it like that, yeah. it only makes me sound like a liar and makes you sound shitty. No, that's not true. So you're doing a disservice to us both. No, it's a... It's, uh, uh, no, you're right. Yeah, th- that logic sounds true. No, no, yeah. It's, <laughs> I'm the best, and Punk House is the best. And that's why I do Punk House. And I'm actually in an improv group with Ed Galvez called Pangea. We perform yeah. all over Los Angeles, and we'll have upcoming dates for you. Yeah. But if you guys liked what you heard tonight, you know, just uh, stay tuned to theforecast.com. Go to the website. It's uh, it's got all the information you need, and we're on iTunes, and uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun. Who knows? And, and if you don't like it, it's gonna get better. <laughs> and who knows? We might, we might post uh, sexy photos of us in the on the website. That's a very big possibility. Mm-hmm.